नमस्कार आई एम डॉक्टर दिनेश कुमार सिंह एडजंक्ट प्रोफेसर एट वेटरनरी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर एंड एनिमल साइंस त्रिभुवन यूनिवर्सिटी एंड ऑल ऑफ यू नो दैट वी आर अंडर लॉकडाउन कंडीशन ड्यू टू द कोरोना वायरस एंड ड्यूरिंग दिस पीरियड आई हैव मेड few educational video related to veterinary profession and veterinary practice and uh, that was made in uh, nepalese language so that is uh, only for the veterinarian working uh, in the nepalese field condition but uh, <clears throat> um i would like to make this time uh, one educational video uh in english language so that uh, our larger veterinary profession can be benefited with this and uh, this time uh, i visited one uh, goat farm uh, and one goat was suffering from the nervous sign disease and the farmer called me and uh, they <clears throat> called me and when i visited uh, that that case uh, Uh, and uh, goat was uh, uh, showing the nervous sign so that case i investigated and uh, that case i want to share uh, with all of you and uh, so that's why i am going to present that case uh, to all of you if you have actually this uh, i have a uh, one uh, uh, youtube uh, channel uh named uh, this uh, evidence for veterinary practice and uh, so <clears throat> this is the case in powerpoint uh, presentation uh, uh that uh, how i have investigated this neurological problem in a goat under field condition and that i am going to present with you actually uh, for suppose uh, if you encounter the uh, animal having the neurological problem then uh, how to proceed with uh, this so mm. collect to make the baseline data and uh, first of uh, first uh, thing is that you have to take the history you have to ask the questions like uh, how did the clinical sign occur means you have to differentiate whether it is acute versus insidious is onset but uh, in uh, our case uh, that was insidious and uh, <clears throat> the second question you can uh, take uh, that have the sign progress and how uh, have they done so and in our case that was slowly progressing in uh, our case uh, of the goat uh, having the neurological symptoms and also the uh, third question you can ask the has the patient been treated previously but uh, in this case um, they did not get any treatment if so what was the response to the treatment so that uh, our case has not got uh, any treatment that's why i there is no answer for that does the patient seems to be pain but i think in our cases uh, we did not get um, information and when doing the physical examination uh, the animal was not suffering from pain so these are the some of the history you have to take uh, uh, while investigating the neurological disease in any animal either in dog cat or ruminant and uh, in our case i am just going to present uh, our case uh, having history and it was a uh, eight month old female local cross goat and suffering from the nervous symptoms and uh, the history was that uh, loss of appetite uh, dullness uh, and sometimes animals so slight head tilt there was ataxia and truncal sway and pressing the head head against obstacle but uh, this this uh, pressing the head against a tackle is observed by this uh, the farmer uh, and uh, the wide base instances and these are the <coughs> history given by the farmer 
and uh, when we approached that case and we did the physical examination and during physical examination we have uh, <clears throat> uh, noted down uh, the sum of the result of uh, physical examination then um, the animal was suffering from bilaterally uh, symmetric ataxia but without paresis there was a wide base instances and uh, swear from side to side while uh, ambulating that is known as the truncal ataxia and uh, when we did the <clears throat> uh, neurological examination then uh, postural reaction was delayed and it was exaggerated and um, keeping fodder in the mouth without chewing for a longer time and when we approach that case uh, we have seen that animal uh, is still having some food in the mouth and uh, not chewing it after two days of lateral recumbency then animal was unable to write itself and uh, also display the ophistotonus. So I would like to show you, uh, and I have taken the video out of that. So I want to share, and that all the physical examination, you can see here the, the wide, bed, uh, wide base instances of the all leg, hind leg also and fore leg also. So that you have to uh, keep in mind because uh, by looking the clinical uh, by looking the clinical sign, you can uh, also um, localize the lesions. Whether it is uh, lesion is in the brain or after brain means a spinal cord or brain stem like this or peripheral nerve. So that is very important. You just see. Slide head tilt uh, also you can see here. Slide, slide the head tilt. You can see. And you see the, well, uh, animal is moving. There is hypermetria. Hypermetria, you see, the wide base instances and little bit. At this time, there is no head tilt, you see. But sometimes there is a head tilt also. So you can see you keenly you have to observe with uh, attention of this. You see the animal having the food in the, their mouth and uh, keeping uh, this uh, fodder for our, uh, for a longer time. So <clears throat> with uh, looking this, uh, actually for neurological examination, our core objective of any neurological examination uh, together with history and uh, you have to take history certainly and uh, neurological examination with uh, combination with the history uh, are to determine whether the condition is neurological or not or any non-neurological cause uh, affecting the nervous system and what part of nervous system is affected you have to identify to me to make the list of differential diagnosis for the clinical sign observed. So on the basis of the history and neurological examinations, um, you have to make the list of differential diagnosis. And then lastly, another objective is uh, an appreciation of severity of the disease in order to give a prognosis. So, when you assess the uh, severity of the disease, you can uh, tell the farmer whether this uh, um, animal is going to recover or not. So that is very important uh, objective. Uh, <clears throat> so at the end of neurological examination, it should be possible to locate the lesion within one of the fo following functionally anatomical group. So by doing, uh, having a history together with the neurological examination, at least what you can do in the field that uh, you can uh, localize the lesion, whether it is in forebrain or whether it is in cerebellum, vestibular system or brain stems or some of the spinal nerve. And we have categorized spinal, at least you can locate uh, in between C1, C5, 
then C6, T2, T3, L3, and L4, S3. Or lastly, peripheral nerve or muscle or neuromuscular junction. Which one? The history and the neurological examination, at least you can localize the lesions. So, <clears throat> categorization can be used and an aid of answering two fundamental questions. So, so by taking the history and neurological localization um, or neurological examination, at least you can give with two answers. That uh, is it rostral or caudal to the foramen magnum? Rostral means whether it is located in the brain or, or uh, whether it is located here in the brain or caudal to the brain. Caudal to the brain means here in the spinal cord, brain stems, Mm, and uh, all the these are the spinal nerve then peripheral nerve so these things you have to answer by doing history and neurological examination another important point is that sometimes you get confusion whether it is a primary or secondary neurological disease so that's very important and sometimes a lot of uh, non uh, means uh, secondary neurological disease also uh, looks like a primary neurological disease. So, uh, what are the source of neurological symptoms? When you see the symptoms in the animal, the source may be primary neurological disorder like uh, listeriosis, which is a primary neurological or a spinal cord trauma, means lesion is within primarily in the uh, nervous system. But uh, some of the uh, diseases or systemic uh, diseases also leading to the neurological symptoms like uh, hypocalcemia and uh, hypomagnesia, like uh, polioencephalomalacia or thiamine deficiency, all will lead to the neurological symptoms. Then there is a non-neurological symptom also leading to the a neurological sign like a multiple lamination, lam severe debility and emaciation, septicemic diseases like uh, mastitis, metritis, clostridial disease, like uh, several pneumonia, uh, pneumonia disease also, and acute fasciolosis. That all will lead to the uh, neurological. So that is uh, very important to understand. Uh, first, you have to identify whether this is a neurological disease or not, whether this is a primary neurological disease or the secondary neurological disease or the non-neurological condition having the symptoms like a uh, primary neurological disease. So that is very important. So how you have to do the neurological, I am not going here to because of my previous uh, video, already explained, uh, but it is in Nepalese uh, language. So maybe later on I will, I will try to make the neurological examination in English uh, language also. So by doing the neurological examination, what you have to evaluate? We have to evaluate the mentation, posture and gait, cranial nerve, postural reaction, spinal reflex, pain on, spinal palpation and pain perception. These things you have to do. That's very important to understand. Here, because our case of uh, lesion in the cerebellum, like um, uh, uh, classically, if the disease is in the cerebellum, you will see the ataxia without weakness. There will be truncal sweat, hypermetria, absent of minence uh, reflex, then wide base instances and intention tremor. These are the classical, but it is not necessary that all of these uh, symptoms you will um, uh, see. And it depends upon the part of the cerebellum or location of the cerebellum having the uh, neurological uh, lesions. So that is also important. So in our case, uh, actually already I have given you the sign and symptom. Some of the sign of symptom of this uh, mm, uh, is uh, related uh, in our case, like uh, ataxia without weakness, there was a truncal sway, hypermetria, uh, there was an absent of minus response, white basin, but we did not see this intention tremor in our case. So, <clears throat> Little bit, uh, I would like to uh, 
I would like to <coughs> give uh, some uh, um, of the uh, little bit uh, detail uh, how I have observed there is ataxia. You can see just by uh, I have given you the video and there was ataxia, and, but without weakness. How you can see whether there is a weakness or not? So just by pulling on the tail while the animal is moving in an attempt to pull uh, it off, of course. The ability of animal to resist this motion and ap apply a strength to keep itself on the course is indicative of uh, this normal, <coughs> what you can see, muscle tone. And uh, ruminant with cerebellar disease do not have a proprioceptive deficit during ataxia. So animal is uh, at least uh, moving with some consciousness. Then there is a truncal sway. What does it mean by truncal sway? When uh, truncal sway is simply a side to side uh, swaying of the body during the forward locomotion. You have seen also in our case. And, uh, <clears throat> but uh, this can also be observed, uh, this truncal sway also can be observed when there is a lesion in the spinal cord. And um, in our case, there was uh, hypermetria and hypermetria actually is nothing but it's an exaggerated movement of the limb during forward movement. And uh, while moving in our case, while moving the goat, uh, there was uh, some exaggerated movement also. And, uh, <coughs> and also wide bit, uh, and that's a based uh, in our case, it was very, obvious that uh, wide base instances animal was uh, trying to hold their body to the ground for fear of falling uh, over so that's why the the, the fore limb also and hind limb also they want to control their body uh, the loss of muscle coordination uh, actually lead to the uh, lead the animal to the position itself such that it may maintain the balance was because the cerebellum uh, control the motor activity. So all of you know the function of the cerebellum is to control the motor activity. But uh, in our case, there was uh, no intention tremor. So on this basis, uh, mm, what uh, we guess that certainly there is a lesions uh, in the uh, cerebe cerebellum. So, but. Uh, <clears throat> At least now, the two question is addressed. In previous slide, already I have given that uh, we have to answer two questions. And uh, that was the, um, whether the lesion is uh, rostral to the foramen magnum or caudal to the foramen magnum. Certainly it is uh, um, rostral to the foramen magnum. Then in uh, brain, actually there is a cerebrum, there is a, uh, uh, cerebellum, there is uh, some part of the brain stems, but you have to look uh, then uh, uh, where is the lesion, whether it is in cerebrum or the cerebellum. So the sign which is given and by doing some of the uh, neurological examination, uh, then we came to the point that certainly the something is wrong with the cerebellum or lesion is in the cerebellum and on that basis we uh, make uh, the differential diagnosis list means so one or two days before uh, death of animal uh, when i visited again to see uh, actually i was monitoring that case so did <clears throat> but uh, you see there is a paddling extensor of the all uh, four limbs. There is slight of histotonus. You can see very clearly. There is a bleeding also. So these symptoms I observed uh, just uh, after, uh, just before, one day before the death of the animal. And then what happens? Uh, animal died uh, after one day of uh, this uh, recumb later recumbency. And then when I did the postmortem, and certainly 
by looking the neuro, uh, by looking the uh, this uh, neurological sign and doing the neurological examination with uh, history taking uh, i came to the conclusion that uh, animal might suffer some uh, lesions in the cerebellum and that's why uh, so one day after one day the uh, animal died and i did uh, this uh, post mortem examination then when i open uh, the brain so there was uh, <clears throat> uh, this uh, cyst uh, you can also see here the this small small proto scoliosis there and it will is a ruptured cyst and here also you can see it was on the cerebellum on the dorsal surface of the cerebellum then another picture you can have here also so <clears throat> this is the cranial cavity and then this is the cyst and there was a uh, this picture you have seen here uh, is taken after fixation of the brain in 10% formalin and you can see the cyst was located in the um, posterior lobe of the cerebellum just above the fourth ventricle you can see the cavity and the cavity after the cyst fluid has been removed and that uh, cyst might uh, have interfered with the uh, cerebrospinal fluid uh, outflow so and uh, that all uh, the cyst uh, um, having the pressure atrophy on the cerebellum and that uh, might uh, lead to the symptoms uh, you have seen in this case uh, the brain in the 14 percent uh, buffer formalin for further <clears throat> histopathological examination uh, and you can see a lot of uh, protoescolysis here uh, in the cyst is the coenerous cerebral cyst and here also i have seen uh, the metacystode with the single proto ascolosis. So, thank you very much. Uh, actually, um, this is all about my cases. Actually, I could have uh, done the surgery, but two or three days of my visit, uh, animal died. I did not get chance to operate on that case. And after death of the animal, uh, I wanted to confirm my case. So my guess was, uh, I think uh, it was almost uh, accurate and, uh, and uh, that is uh, evidenced by doing the postmortem. So if you do the postmortem uh, of the cases which you have attended uh, before, then that will give you the more confidence and uh, that will give you the more knowledge uh, and if you attend the similar cases in uh, future, then you can attend or you can give uh, the treatment or prognosis to the farmer effectively. So that's the uh, importance of doing, doing post-mortem frequently in the field. So thank you very much. I think um, after uh, this uh, uh, video, I will give you uh, the surgical procedure, actually the surgical procedure for removing the um, this coenerius cerebellis uh, cyst uh, from the brain, especially when it is located on the superficial surfaces, even from the cerebrum, cerebrum and uh, from the cerebellum. So, and uh, searching the literature, and also I have operated uh, four or five cases and successfully I have removed uh, this uh, cyst uh, most of the time and there was a uh, uh, uneventful uh, recovery. So, okay friend, uh, I, will, uh, <coughs> I will make the video on the surgical techniques uh, later on and certainly uh, and this video I am going to put in my uh, this uh, video uh, uh, YouTube channel and uh, I will share with the Facebook also so that uh, you can share with other friend also 
and uh, if you subscribe my youtube channel i think you will get uh, this type of uh, uh, the um, field cases uh, uh, frequently and also it will motivate you actually i want to contribute something to our veterinary profession i am a retired professor and still i am working as a urgent professor so still i am active in doing the a veterinary practice so thank you very much uh, all of you and i have to stop thank you